So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 maths and in this video we'll be going over the GCSE area of trigonometry with a focus on cosine and sine rule, revision and going through some exam style questions. Now the important thing just like with normal trigonometry or Sokoto trig or right angle trig is that you need to make sure that you understand the labelling of your triangle. Now unlike with right angle trig or Sokoto trig there is no right angle to base all your labelling that you need to do. So here you can end up with a scalene triangle, you can end up with an isosceles or an equilateral triangle or so forth. So a good place to start when working with this is always start with the angle, which I'm just going to call this angle A. So just the top tip is always start with the angle. Now with regards to that, the key thing you need to remember is that if you are finding a length or angle, then label the angle capital A first. And if you are finding the area, then label label the angle C. And again, if you're not too sure what that means, then do not worry. When we go through some examples or when we go through the formulas, that will make sense. So here we've got angle A, and it doesn't matter which angle you call A. I've just purpose just gone for this one randomly. Then the side opposite is going to be lowercase A. Then if I pick another angle, so let's go for this one here, and label that capital B, so then the opposite side is going to be lowercase b or b, and the third angle is therefore going to be capital C, and the opposite side is going to be curly cur. Now the key thing to remember is that when you are labelling, there's going to be things missing. So there's going to be certain angles that aren't labelled, that hasn't got a number attached to it, or it's not been asked to find. There might be sides that are, again, equally un not labelled, not given the length, or you're not even expected to find it. That's fine. You don't need to label everything, capital letter ABC and lowercase ABC. It's just a case of spotting this. And again, it's just as long as you know what to start with, what letters to start with, and where to start with, that's the most important thing. And again, whatever you've been asked to find, whether it be an angle or a length, I would always start by calling that X and then going through your ABC and then lowercase ABC labeling it. So the next thing we move on to is the formulas and their versions. Now, with the cosine rule, you'll have two variations. You've got this first variation, which is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Now, one thing I would recommend you do first is put brackets around the 2abc cos a and the reason for that is just for using your calculator just in case you end up with negative answers but just make sure that you put brackets and i would always recommend you put brackets around the 2bc cos a now we use this rule so use this when finding a side because obviously little low case a is a side and also top tip is note don't forget to square root because obviously this formula has a squared the subject but often you're not asked to find a squared you're, uh, you're always asked to find a so don't forget to square root a squared to find a now the next rule cos a equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared all divided by 2bc is just a rearrangement of the first one however we use this formula so you use this when finding an angle. Now the key thing here is again note don't forget to inverse uh, inverse cos um, to find A. And again it's a lot of it where people go wrong but again common sense with your answers and what you see on your calculator should give away that you've either done something wrong or not done something. Now the next thing we move on to is the sine rule, which is A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. So again, lowercase refers to sides, uppercase refers to angles. Now for this, you only need to use two. So you only ever use 
ah, can spell and write at the same time, which I clearly cannot. So you only ever use two out of the three fractions. So personally, I would scrap C over sine C and just label your angles A, B, and then your opposite sides A and B, respectively. And you use this to find angles and sides. So there's only one variation of it. Now, sometimes in a revision guide, you may have two variations. So sometimes a revision guide may say, use this to find sides, or you use this to find angles. Now they're both the same. So personally speaking, you're going to cross multiplying them. So I would say just stick to one. I always tend to go for this version here, which you can see um, with the lowercase at the top. But again, it's entirely up to you. And the revision guides aren't wrong. Websites aren't wrong. It's just personal taste. Now the next question that comes up, oh, the next formula I should say, is that the area of a triangle when you're not given the perpendicular height. Now, if you are given this situation so let's say that's 10 and this is six centimeters then obviously i'm going to use the area equals base times height divided by two or a half base times height to work out the area however if i'm given a triangle of let's say let's say 13 12 i don't know 10 and that's 60 degrees then obviously i don't know what this height is going to be for me to use this formula to work out what the area of the triangle is. Now, if you're not given the height, then to work out the area of a triangle is half AB sine C. And again, as a top tip, is start by labeling capital C first. So for example, if I want to work out the area of this triangle, then C 60 would be my angle C. So that means that that's lower C. This is my A and this is my B. So then substituting the values in for this particular question, lowercase a is 13, lowercase b is uh, 10, and c is 60. And then I'll substitute those numbers into this formula, and boom, I've got the area of a triangle. Now another common question I get asked is, when do I know when to use the cosine rule and when do I use the sine rule? Now both allow you to find missing sides and angles in a triangle, however which rule you use depends on the information that's given in the question. Now if you're given three sides and one angle, where one of them obviously is what you've been asked to find, so we call that x, then what we do is we use the cosine rule. So whether it be a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, or cos a equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared, all divided by 2bc, then that's absolutely fine. If, however, you're given two sides and two angles where one of them is x or one of them is the one thing you've been asked to find, then what you then need to use is use the sine rule. So that's the key bits of information that you need to decide which of the two rules you use, all based on the information that's given in the question. Now, some more higher mark questions may involve you actually using both. Um, to work out what the end answer is going to be, but just look out for those. But again, I would say three sides and one angle is always the cosine rule. Two sides and two angles is going to be the sine rule, with again, where one of those is going to be uh, the thing that you're trying to find. Now, another good to a top tip is always mark what you've been asked to find before you label the triangle. So first, get an understanding. Are you finding an angle? Are you finding a side? Whichever side you're trying to find, then mark that with X, and then go through the stages of marking your A, B, C, um, in terms of capital letters and lowercase for your sides and your angles. So let's go through some exam style questions and show you how many marks they're worth and where you're going to get these marks. So for this question, it's asking us to work out the size of angle X. So obviously the angle, the thing I'm trying to find has already been labeled X, so that's fine. So the next thing I've then got to do is see what I've been given. Now in this question, I've been given two sides and two angles. So if you go back to what I previously said, that means that this question is going to be a sign rule question. And then again, just start labeling. So I'm going to call this angle of 125 capital A. So that means the opposite side is going to be lowercase a. This angle x is going to be b. And the opposite side, which is 6 centimeters, is going to be um, b. So for the terms of the sine rule, again, I'm not going to get any marks for writing what the sine rule is. But however, I will get marks for using it. So again, what I'm going to do is substitute the numbers in. So I've got 14 over sine 
125 equals, and then it's going to be 6 divided by sine x. Now that is probably where I'm going to get my first mark. Now the next thing I then need to do is cross multiply. So I'm just going to multiply 14 by sine x and 6 by sine 125. So what that leaves me with is 14 sine x equals 6 sine 125. And then I just need to solve this for x. So I start by dividing by 14, end up with sine x equals 6 sine 125, all divided by 14. I've got one there. And then finally, to work out what x is, I just do the inverse sine of 6 sine 125 over 14. And if I type that into my calculator, which I'm going to do now, and let's just bring that calculator in. And so I've got inverse sine, and then set up my fraction, and I've got 6, and then sine 125, close bracket, all divided by 14, roll across, close bracket, equals, and I get an answer of 20.6 to one decimal place. So I'm going to write 20. 0.6 degrees to one decimal place. Now note how this question doesn't mention anything about rounding, so I can round it to whatever I want. Um, now because it's a decimal answer, I'll at least give it to one decimal place. But if you're ever nervous and there's no mention of what they want it rounded to, then you could easily just copy what's on your calculator. So I could easily write the answer as 20.5524701 and not have to worry about my rounding. So let's have a look at our next question. Oh, let's have a look where the other two marks come from. So I would say you would get one mark for either of these two lines here. So either this or this would get you one mark and then your final mark for your final answer. Moving on to our next example. So this example here, it says here is a triangle and we want to work out the length of PR. Now you can see PR has not been marked, but that is basically this line here. That's PR. I'm going to work out the length, so I'm going to call that x. Now from this, you can see I've been given three lengths and one angle, with one of them being x, so I'm going to use the cosine rule. Now also, as x is a side, I'm going to be using a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus bracket 2bc cos a. So substitute numbers in, let's just write down what we've got. So I've got capital A is 120, lowercase a is a. This is going to be B and this is going to be C. And again, it doesn't really matter which one you call BC because again, it's irrelevant. So here, looking at this, I've got A equals X, B equals 9, C equals 6, and capital A equals 120. So substituting these numbers in into the formula, what I get is I get X squared equals, and it's going to be 9 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 9 times 6 times cos of 120. Now, from this, I'm just going to simply type that all into my calculator. Let's get the calculator back. There we go. And just enter it in. So I've got 9 squared plus 6 squared minus bracket 2 times 9 times 6 times cos of 120, close bracket, equals, and it's 171. But then I need to remember to square root, so x equals the square root of 171. But also, if you think about it, is how realistic is an answer of 171 going to be? Well, not realistic because the two sides I've got, I've been given are 6 and 9, so that's definitely not going to be the answer. So in here, the answer is going to be the square root of 171, which gives me an answer of 13.1 to one decimal place. Uh, centimeters to one dp. Now, what wouldn't do need to write centimeters because it's already marked there. But again, where you're going to get the marks from is one mark for using the cosine rule with the correct substitution, one mark for finding 171, and one mark for your final answer. And again, there's no mention here of what they want the rounding to. So again, you could write down whatever rounding, as long as the number is correct, to whatever you want. Looking at our third example, so again, looking at what we're trying to find. So here I'm trying to find out what x is. So again, I label the triangle. So now this, I've got been given three sides and one angle. Uh, so that's going to be the cosine rule. 
Now, one thing I did forget to mention is always make sure that the units are the same. Sometimes the little sneaky ones, um, you may find that the units for the sides might be different. So one might be in meters, one might be in centimeters, and always make sure that whenever you're working with the sine rule or the cosine rule, your, your units need to be the same. So always check. Now this we're looking for the angle, so I'm going to label the angle A, so that means that 55 is going to be little a, and B and C are going to be 40 and 32 respectively. So labeling the points, I get little a is 55, B is 40, curly cut is 32, and angle A is X. So again I'm going to use the cosine rule, so I'm going to use cos A uh, equals, if I just write down which rule I'm going to use, I'll write it up here, so cos A equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over 2bc. So that's all I'm going to use. So if I then just go on and substitute that straight in, I get cos x equals, and it's going to be 40 squared plus 32 squared minus 55 squared all divided by 2 times 40 times 32. Now if I type that all into my calculator, so let's get that uh, back. So I've got 40 squared plus 32 squared minus 55 squared over 2 times 40 times 32. Now sometimes you may end up getting a negative number which is absolutely fine. So I've not done anything wrong. I've checked the substitution that's correct. So cos A equals minus 0 0.56 blah blah blah. I'm going to leave that on my calculator because that's obviously not my final answer. And so what I then need to do is do inverse cos of the answer, or certainly I could just type that whole number in again, and I get an answer of 99.0. So A equals 99.0 degrees, and that's to one decimal place. So my answer there is 99.0 on DP. Now if you did write a little zero unit there, uh, even though it says degrees, you're not losing marks, that'd be pretty harsh for you to lose any marks on that. So moving on to this next applied question, so looking at this, this is involving bearings as well, but let's just show you how we use bearings and this topic. So it says the diagram above shows three yachts, A, B and C, which are assumed to be in the same horizontal plane, so basically it just means they're on the same flat surface. Yacht B is 500 miles due north of yacht A. Yacht C is 700 miles, or I'm guessing miles, uh, from A. Could be meters, but that's insignificant. And the bearing of C from A is 15 degrees. And the question is asking us to uh, calculate the distance between yacht B and C in meters, or it is meters, so that's what the M means, and two, three significant figures. So as you can see, what I need to do is take this triangle out. Now what this question is asking me to do is find the distance between B and C. So that's this length here. Now as you can see, I've got a triangle. So if I just take that triangle out, this is X, that's 15, that's 500, that's 700. So you can see for part A, what I've got to do is I've got to use the cosine rule. Because I've got three sides and one angle. So substituting numbers into the cosine rule, and I'm working out a side, so I'm using A squared. So x squared, let's just write down what the value is, so a equals x, b equals 700, c equals 500, and capital A is 15 degrees. So here, substituting those numbers in into the formula, which again, it's always good practice to write out the formula, particularly if you're revising, um, just so you, it's a way of remembering it. And again, putting brackets around there, so what I've got, substituting all those things in, I get... Uh, x squared equals 500 squared plus 700 squared minus 2 times 500 times 700 times cos of 15. So substituting that all into my calculator, so let's just work that out. So I've got 500 squared, now don't be deterred by big numbers, and it just means that my answer is going to be a big number as well, minus 2 times 500 times 700 multiplied by cos 15, close bracket, close bracket, press equals, and I get 6381, 6385.1. Let's get the calculator back up, 9216. And then what I then need to do is square root the answer. 
and so I get a value of x equals uh, let's draw square root of the answer just double check make sure everything's fine yep yeah. equals the square root of the answer which gives me an answer to three significant figures so let's just write that down first so I get two five two point and then get the calculator back up and then six eight nine three seven 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 now we'll round this up to three sig fig so my third significant figure is the unit so round this up to nearest sig fig in it the sig fig i should say sig fig in it just making up my own words so that's going to be 253 meters and that's to three s f looking at b so question b says the bearing of yacht c from yacht b is uh, theta degrees as shown in the diagram and we're asked to find what theta is now for this what I need to do is I need to work out what this angle here is because this angle plus theta adds up to 180 so let's take that triangle out so let me just do a little mini sketch now if I want to work out what this orange angle is going to be so let's start by calling that x then this side here is going to be 500 this side here is going to be 700 and I now know that this side here is going to be 523 now Personally speaking, so from this, I then need to work out A. So I'm going to be using the cosine rule, and I'm going to be using cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. Now, my question is this do we use 253 or do I use the exact value? Now, in theory, you should really be using the exact values, however, they may allow you using 253 now me personally i'm not because you only really should round off your final answer but it just means we're going to be using the calculator excessively so in terms of working with this if i just put a hashtag on this so let's just call this hashtag one so looking at where hashtag one is let's just substitute the numbers in so what i've got is i've got cos x equals and it's going to be now this is my a if that's capital a and this is my b that's my c so i've got 500 squared plus and then my other angle which is going to be 252.689 squared minus 700 squared all divided by 2 times 500 times 252.689 now I'm not going to use the exact values but I'm going to use a few extra decimal numbers in there so just be mindful of, of that so subbing, substituting all of that in, I get cos x equals, and get the calculator back up, and just copy that number down. So I get minus 0 0.69709512. And then to work out x, I'm going to use the inverse cos of the answer, in which I get x equals, and if I just do that on my calculator, so shift cos of the answer I get an answer of 134 point uh, let's just get that back up uh, point 2 so this angle here is 134.2 so that therefore means that theta is going to be 180 minus 134.2 because remember that wasn't the answer and if I type that in, 180 minus the answer, I get 45.8. So 45.8 degrees. And because it's a bearing, the answer therefore going to be, I need to round it to the nearest whole number, so it's going to be 046 degrees. And there is my answer. So in this last example, here what we've got is we've got a seven mark question, which is quite rare, but if you realize what work is needed, then it's going to be fully justified. So let's see if we can do this in less than seven minutes. Now in this question, we're asked to work out the area of ABC, so the, area, the area, total area of this shape. Now the problem is that what I've got is I can see that I've got a right angle triangle, which is A, B, and C. And I know that this angle here is 57, and I know that this length here is 9 centimeters. But then I've also got another triangle, and this is 39, this is 43, this is 9 centimeters, and let's just label the size so B, D, and C. Now, the total area is what I've got to work out is the area of these two triangles. 
Now, to work out the area of a triangle ABC, then I need to know what this side here is. So if I just call this uh, A, I need to know what B is. And in the second triangle, in order to work out the area of this triangle, then I need to know either this, which I just call X, or I need to know what Y is. Uh, or I need to work out what this angle here is going to be. Now, in terms of this, it's pretty obvious. I can then let's go about working this. Let's start off with triangle ABC. Now, ABC is a right angle triangle, and we've got angles and we've got sides. But this, as it's a right angle, I'm going to be using Sokotoa. So, knowing that this is the hypotenuse and theta is 57, and I need to work out what the opposite and the adjacent is going to be. So, looking at this then, so looking, finding O. So to find O, then the two bits of information I've got is that it, O and H is sine 57 equals O over 9. So O equals 9 times sine 57, which if I get the calculator, gives me an answer of 9 times sine 57 equals 7.548. So 7.548, so that's what O equals. So this length here, I've now worked out to be is uh, 7.548. Now in terms of the adjacent, I'm going to be using cos, so that's going to be equal to, to find A. Then what I need to then do is do cos of 57 equals a over 9 so a equals 9 times cos 57 and if I type that into my calculator so 9 times cos 57 equals 4.901 so 4.901 so then this length here is 4.901 so that means that the area of A, B, C is going to be 4.901 times 7.548 or divided by 2, which gives me an answer of, and again, let's quickly type that in, so 4.901 times 7.548. Or eight. Alternatively, I could have just used um, 9 cos 57 and 9 sine 57. That would have been absolutely fine. To be fair, it would have been more accurate. I think with three decimal places, that should be fine. So that then gives me an answer of 18.49. And let's get down the other few numbers. 6374. So that's this area here. So this area I've worked out as being 18.496, blah, blah, blah. Now moving on to my second triangle, so I need to work out the area of this triangle here. Now, and let's just finish leaving that up. Now the area of this is going to be using half AB sine C. Now for this, I need to know what two sides of the triangle are, so I need to know what one of them are. Now what I need to also do is pick an angle of C. Now for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this side as my angle C, so then that then becomes little c. This then becomes A and this then becomes B. So labeling my triangle here, what I've got is that this is A, this is big C, that is going to be B. So what I need to do is I need to find out what X is. So I can actually get rid of that Y. So to find X, so looking at my second triangle, so let's just create a bit of space here. So to find X, what I need to use is use the sign rule. So for this, to find x I need to use a sine rule so I've got x over sine 39 equals and then I do need to actually I do need to find out what this angle here is so I can do that by doing 180 minus 39 minus 43 so I do that on the calculator 180 minus 43 minus 39 I get an answer of 98 so that there is 98 degrees and so that's going to be 9 over sine 98. Then if I cross multiply, I get x sine 98 
equals nine sine 39 and then take the sine 40 over to the side so x equals 9 sine 39 over sine 98 and again if I do the calculator on this I've got 9 sine 39 over sine 98 close that bracket syntax error and that equals 5.7195 so one and it was nine five so what I've then worked out is that this length here is 5.7195 so from this labeling the triangle I've now got what my B is so from this I know that little a is 9 little b is 5.7195 and c is going to be 43 degrees so then from this and again this is becoming an absolute mess and everything's everywhere so from this I've got hot the area of this equals a half a b sine c so it's going to be equal to a half times 9 times 5.7195 times sine of 43 and typing that all into my calculus say so 0.5 times 9 times 5.7195 multiplied by sine of 43 I get an answer of 17.553 and carries on so then the answer to this particular question is going to be these two numbers added together so the area is equal to those two numbers added together so 18.496 plus 17.533 gives me an answer of 36.029 so that equals 36.0 centimeter squared and there is my final area for a b c d